God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. It is a joy to have you with us one more time uh, again. Uh, thank you all for being with us today. And this first Sunday after Easter, my hope is that even though Easter was obviously different for all of us, my hope is that Easter was a wonderful time of celebration, uh, whether you were able to be with any family or whether you were alone, that we were still able to all celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on Easter. So thank you for being with us today. And we do have a few announcements to share with you today before we get going. Uh, first of all, I have some thank yous I need to share. Uh, I want to thank the Davies for their morning praise. I hope that when you're looking at the videos, you look up the morning praise videos, the Davies are going to be uh, posting a new morning praise video for each Sunday. And uh, it should be, it's a separate video, but you should be able to find it on the channel around where you found this one. And uh, so they're gonna be uh, posting those every week. So I appreciate them. Uh, Jennifer is again with us today. I appreciate Jennifer so very much. And, uh, uh, Pastor Ralph is here today. He's going to provide a little bit of music. I want to thank Nancy for getting the words out to our hymns. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, some wonderful hymns of the faith today. And also, I need to uh, thank Scott Davies. Uh, we had a little accident with the computer a couple weeks ago, and it made the camera get messed up. And so Scott was able to for the most part, put it all back together again. And so I really appreciate Scott uh, and his time and uh, resetting our camera and uh, making it better. <laughs> In terms of uh, this coming week, just a few reminders. Obviously, most everything is uh, still not happening in terms of regular church stuff, but just a few things. Uh, we are still meeting for our uh, weekly Monday morning, PGA Golf, you're more than welcome to come and join us about 7 a.m. over at Meadow Oaks, and uh, the more the merrier. Love to have you come out. 
Uh, Tuesday morning at 9.30 is our prayer power circle done uh, virtually on Zoom. And I'm going to ask Nancy to send out again a reminder on how to get into the meeting. And I hope that you'll join us. Uh, it's been pretty cool because we've had people that didn't join us before uh, who are joining us for that morning prayer time on Tuesday. So I, uh, there's always room for more. We can have up to 100 people on our Zoom channel. So I hope you, you'll come and, and join us. Also, uh, this week we began doing our Coffee with the Pastor on Thursday morning at 8.30, uh, again on Zoom. And uh, there was a couple little technical things we had to straighten out, but uh, we're going to be do <clears throat> doing that on Thursday mornings also at 8.30 in the morning. So uh, again, Nancy will be sending out reminders as to how to get into that. And off with pastors, just very leisurely time of sitting back and chatting about whatever we want to chat about. Uh, maybe our favorite uh, restaurant that's offering takeout and delivery now that didn't before, or maybe it's some deep theological question. So uh, whatever's on your heart and your mind, we have a chance to talk about that when we get together with Coffee with Pastor on Thursday. Also a reminder, Nancy is still going to be putting out the newsletter and um, so if you have something that needs to go into the next newsletter, please, please make sure that you get it to her uh, so she can include that. Uh, please write up the article. Don't just give her a few facts and figures, but please go ahead and write up the article so she can include that into the newsletter. And uh, she'll probably be working on that uh, next week. So uh, please get that into her uh, soon. Uh, beyond that, uh, we still are uncertain about when we'll be able to come back together again. The latest from our bishop is that that may not be till about the middle of May, but we are just playing it day by day, just like the government's playing it day by day and everything else. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, no matter how badly we would love to be able to get together, uh, the reason that we're not getting together, aside from the fact that the bishop and the government have told us that it's not a good idea, is uh, we want to protect you. Uh, we don't want anybody to come to church uh, feeling good and a few days later discover that they've been infected by somebody because uh, so many people are carrying it and don't even know it. So that's the real reason that we're not getting together on Sunday mornings uh, beyond the fact that uh, the government and the bishop have asked us not to. It's for your protection. And I know this isn't the same, and I'm looking forward to getting together again just as much as you are, maybe even more. And uh, we are going to be able to do that soon. So those are, I think, all the announcements that we have. Uh, we. Uh, Everything else is still closed, the thrift shop's not working and uh, other things. But uh, Nancy will keep you informed via email, a newsletter, and uh, all those other ways that she has. Uh, if you aren't on our email list right now, if you're not receiving emails from Nancy, please contact the church office. Uh, she will be in the office from 10 to 2 uh, next week and then generally from 10 to 2 uh, during the week. So uh, if you're not receiving our emails and you would like to, please, please uh, contact the office uh, when she's there and she will be happy to add you to our email list. Well, that being said, we are going to uh, start our time together. And uh, we've got a, a couple hymns today that I think are very appropriate because when we're alone and when we are not able to uh, support one another by being together, then all we can do is uh, lean on the Lord. And so we're going to start today uh, by uh, singing My Faith Looks Up to Me, because that's the other part of leaning on the Lord, is uh, maintaining our faith uh, during this time. So. Uh, that's going to be the plan. So get out your song sheet and let's get ready to join in on My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
share a few prayer concerns uh, with us today. And uh, before we go on further, uh, the first thing I want to share is that a couple members, well, they're not members of our church, some fairly new folks of our church, Jim and Carol Arment, are uh, dealing with the virus. They both have been affected. Uh, they were affected, infected, I guess, around March 26th. The good news is that it's not something that got into their lungs, uh, but it's affected their sense of taste and their sense of smell, and uh, that's bad enough. So I want to make sure that we lift them up. And I talked to her today, and they're doing okay, but it shouldn't drag them out for a long time. So please keep them in your prayers. Um, also, I talked to you about my grandson's friend, Mason, and Mason had been sick and found out his family got sick, and they've been testing to find out if it's the virus, and last word I had is that the test hadn't come back yet. So we want to be keeping them uh, all in our prayers. I did hear that at least one of our firefighters, possibly more, have been infected with the virus, and there's at least one of our uh, one of our shifts at one of the stations that's been put into isolation because they've had contact with some people that uh, that were affected. So we of course want to be keeping all of them in our prayers also. And uh, beyond that, um, we just want to keep on praying for folks. Uh, we want to uh, ask for God to watch over all of our first responders, our medical people, uh, people in our congregation. The Arments are the first ones that I've heard within our congregation that have been affected by it. Uh, actually, if you are part of our congregation and you've been uh, infected by the virus, we would like to know so we can be praying for you more specifically, so you can give me a call, give Nancy a call, and uh, hopefully you know, the virus will be gone soon. That's our biggest prayer, is that God will take the virus away. So uh, that all being said, uh, let's go ahead and let's go to prayer this morning. Father, thank you for being with us always. Thank you for a God who loves us and hears our prayers. and. Uh, we would just lift up those that we're aware of that are dealing with the virus, particularly the Arments and the firefighter and possibly Mason's family. And uh, there may be others that we have become aware of, Lord, that uh, or you know, members of our extended families within our congregation that are dealing with it. And we would ask that you touch them and heal them, that they'll be done with their uh, virus uh, very soon and uh, be able to be back and healed again, Lord. Uh, we do ask that you put your arms of protection around all of our first responders, our medical people, uh, the folks in the congregation and beyond, Lord. We ask that you be with those many who have been already touched by the virus in one way or another all around the world, Lord. Uh, what a terrible thing to... <coughs> Uh, not be able to be sure that the person that you're talking to is is fine and is not a carrier of the virus and having to be so careful about how we interact with others. But we would just ask that you be with those that have all been touched by the virus. At the same time, Lord, we don't want to forget those many others in our prayer list and uh, that are dealing with other kinds of issues because just because the virus is here, doesn't mean that their issues have become any less important. Uh, they're just as important as they were. So we would ask for your healing touch in the lives of all of those that are represented by folks on our prayer list and uh, their families, Lord, that you would watch over them and you would touch and heal them, Lord. And uh, we just ask that you continue to be with us as we all do our best to get through this virus in a successful way. And, and Lord, our biggest prayer is that the virus would just be removed from us, that it'll just be taken away, and uh, that 
uh, we won't have to worry about it anymore. The sooner the better on that one, Lord. But we just lift these all up to you, knowing that the answer will come in your way and in your time. And so we ask that you give us patience and the ability to deal with what we have to deal with in the meantime. So thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today, for being with us always. And uh, we also thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and for that prayer you taught your disciples, say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, Pastor Ralph is here today, and as we're talking about this whole idea of uh, being alone and isolated today, uh, if I had to be isolated with anybody, my first choice would be to be alone with Jesus. And, uh, so that's what he's going to be uh, bringing us today as we go into the garden alone with Jesus. As many of you know, the guitar that I usually play is a six-string guitar I've had for years and years and years, and it has stickers all over it and patches and things, and it's called Fred. Uh, this one is a 12-string. It's called Mike. Um, it's called Mike because a very dear uh, Christian brother, friend named Michael Corneco um, gave this guitar to me. We, in, in my previous church, we would get together every couple months and, and do some songs together uh, for the congregation. So, um, welcome, Mike. And let's go to the garden. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the road and the voice I hear falling on my a son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we carry None other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we take none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice so full, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tell none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we pray, 
none of it has ever Thank you, Ralph. Um, what a good place to be. If we have to be alone, be alone in a garden with Jesus. Speaking of alone, I expect that by now you're feeling uh, pretty isolated and maybe a bit stir crazy. Uh, some of you may or may not know that uh, I'm an introvert and so I don't usually mind being alone but I do have to tell you that I am missing being with you and in church and all the many church activities. It's just such an ingrained part of my life that in spite of the fact that uh, being alone doesn't bother me all that much, not being with you bothers me. So uh, anyway, I hope that uh, all of you are dealing as well as you can under circumstances. <laughs> I would expect that to pass the time uh, you've been taking up possibly new hobbies. Uh, maybe you've worked every puzzle that you owned. The fact is that we pulled out a puzzle the other day, and it was a very strange puzzle. All the pieces were kind of long and skinny. Nancy took one look at it and said, oh, no, we're not doing that. That'll probably end up back in the thrift store. Uh, but we did pull out another puzzle, and, you know, you always try to put the edges on first. At least that's what we do. And... I fear that maybe it's missing a piece or two, but I get most of my puzzles from the thrift store, so we'll do the best we can with what we have. Um, maybe some of you have been wa binge watched some TV series or maybe some movie series that you've been wanting to see, Star Wars and their multitude of episodes or whatever the case might be. And I expect that uh, many of you, like myself, are filling in a lot of your time eating. It seems to be a, a way to fill the time in. The thing is, though, as time goes by, isolation can have a negative effect. Uh, you can become irritable. Uh, obviously, you can gain weight if part of your time is spent eating. Uh, we get less active. <laughs> Uh, we can become distracted from Scripture and the Lord. Uh, we can even become depressed. And unfortunately, as the longer we're in isolation, the more we give in to temptations that we may not have given into at any other time. Jesus had two distinct types of experiences when he was isolated from others that we're going to be talking about today. And, you know, your first reaction might be, well, but that's Jesus. Jesus is God. Of course, uh, the way that I would react is certainly not the way Jesus would react because Jesus uh, was God and so Jesus was better. <laughs> well, Jesus obviously was better, but at the same time, we have to understand that while he was here on earth, he was fully God, but he was fully man too. And so uh, that uh, human part of Jesus would have been the one that really would have experienced all of those uh, things uh, when he was alone. And so if we think about that, then we can relate to Jesus' experiences. And I think that as we think about these two experiences uh, that Jesus had, that maybe it will help us as we're dealing with our own time of isolation. We're going to be reading, first of all, from Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Uh, this is just after Jesus was baptized. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones become bread. Jesus answered, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it's written, he will command his angels concerning you. They'll lift you up 
in their hands, so you will not strike your foot against the stone. Uh, see, the devil knows scripture too. He is quoting Psalm 91. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. So now we're going to move to Matthew 14. Now this is a representative case of Jesus voluntarily uh, going into a, a time of isolation. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. This was just after he fed the 5,000. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And when evening came, uh, he was there alone. And so ends the reading. So these passages highlight two distinct different ways in which Jesus was in isolation. The first one was put upon him. The spirit led him into the desert. And the second one was voluntary. And that voluntary one was one that he did often. So let's think about these for a minute. First of all, in the first one, Jesus is led to the desert by the Spirit. And this was part of his preparation for ministry. I said Jesus is fully God and fully human. And because he's fully human, he has to go through all these many, many experiences. And I guess the good news when all is said and done is that it enables God to be very empathetic to us as his own son goes through all these different kinds of experiences. And so this is one of them. The devil didn't start those temptations until after 40 days of Jesus fasting. And by that time, Jesus would have been hungry and weak. So he's out in the wilderness and no good shelter, uh, no food. And so he's kind of barely surviving. By the time 40 days is over, uh, he's very hungry, he's weak, he's very tired. And the devil waits until we're at our weakest point in order to really uh, start tempting us to do things that we wouldn't have done otherwise. And so the devil offers him three temptations. Well, why don't you just turn these stones into bread? That's a big temptation when you're hungry. 40 days without eating, uh, Jesus is very hungry, and he is the Son of God. It seems like that would be uh, something that would be easy to do, and yet Jesus resists. Uh, the second one involves uh, putting God to the test. The third one is an offer of power, a temptation of power. And in spite of his condition, Jesus remembered Scripture to fend off the temptation of the devil. I think that's an important point for us to remember that uh, when we go through the challenges of life, uh, we need to draw upon Scripture. We need to draw upon God's promises. We need to draw upon Scripture. And that's why I emphasize so often that we really need to be studying Scripture, learning Scripture. We don't have to know it word for word by heart, but we need to know well enough so when we're going through the challenges of life, uh, we can draw upon some of what we read and remember some of those promises, remember some of those things that God said uh, when we are going through difficult uh, times. Finally, he overcame the devil and sent him away and says that angels came and ministered to him. Uh, kind of a reward for having resisted the devil for that time. Uh, angels come and minister to him. <clears throat> the second time, though, I said was just representative of uh, many other times that uh, Jesus voluntarily went off to pray. We hear about that a, a lot in the course of the Gospels. And so we don't really know what he prayed for. There was one, uh, one prayer that's known as the Jesus prayer that's in uh, scripture. And 
uh, in there, we get a glimpse of uh, what Jesus prays for when he goes off by himself. Uh, the, the, the disciples and all who would come after are uh, really an important part of that particular prayer. So uh, Jesus goes off by himself often. And so I'm thinking that he's probably praying for guidance. He is pro probably constantly in prayer for his disciples. For the time that his disciples were with him for those three years, it seems like by the end of that third year, they still were not real aware of uh, who Jesus really was, what was going to happen. And so I imagine that Jesus was in constant prayer for his disciples. He would have been in prayer for those 5,000 that had just uh, been fed. If you think about that, when he preached to the 5,000, uh, we were uh, at the place uh, in Israel where they believed that took place. And uh, there's kind of a steep hillside. And it would have made sense for Jesus to be on top of that hillside preaching and the people uh, sitting around basically on the grass uh, hearing Jesus because uh, being in that situation, they would have been able to hear him. And so as Jesus preached, he would have seen those 5,000 people there. He had just got done feeding them. He knew that they had been there for a long, long time listening to him. And so I imagine that his prayer for those 5,000 were that at least some would have heard the message, would have responded to the message, and become believers and followers of his. The other thing I believe that Jesus uh, prayed for was what to do, where to go next, because there's a couple instances where Jesus uh, goes off to pray and comes back and says, okay, okay now we've got to go. In spite of the fact that uh, people, wherever he was, wanted him to stay, uh, he was like, no, we can't stay. We have to go on to the next place. And so part of his time out there was just praying to God, what do I do next? Where do I go? And uh, that would have been probably all of those things part of his prayer and he would have returned i believe energized uh, he would have gone off uh, maybe kind of worn out but uh, when he came back uh, you know prayer is supposed to be a two-way street and so if we pray correctly then the hope is that god is going to to respond as we're in our own prayer the problem is we don't usually wait for god to answer and so we don't always get the benefit. But uh, Jesus, I'm sure, would be there for a long, long time, and he would get the benefit. He would be able to hear God uh, respond to him. Well, so let's think about these situations in our own isolation. Uh, we've been forced into the isolation, and so there are some negative things and positive things I think that can come out of our life, of our isolation. Uh, some of the negative things, I think, are that the longer it goes on, the stronger the test of faith becomes. Uh, whenever we're going through challenges in life, regardless of, of what the cause was or what the situation is, I believe that many of those times our tests of our faith. And I've talked often about the time that we were out of work uh, for those nine months. And I remember that near the end of that nine months, that Nancy had gotten pretty much to the end of her rope and possibly near the end of her faith. And it was, uh, God just didn't seem to be giving us any good answers. We were prayerful. We continued to uh, live the life that we believe God called us to, and yet at the end of nine months, it was getting more and more difficult, a bit more desperate in terms of finances. And so uh, just when we were at that point, though, is when I finally got a job. And so uh, God knew when we were at that point. And so I believe that the longer this goes on, it just shows it's a, a longer test of our faith. Are we going to be able to hold on all the way through 
and maintain our faith, or are we going to get to the point of just giving up? Uh, we can lose hope. You know, our, our hope every day lies in Jesus Christ. And if we are, are put our hope in anything else, it just is nothing that guarantees that our hope is going to be fulfilled. Now, obviously, this virus situation has shown many people that they can't put hope in their jobs because so many people have lost their jobs or at least are laid off uh, for a period of time till everything gets back to normal again. And so we can't put our hope in our job or can't even really put much hope in the government because the government can only do so much to help us. And so uh, if our hope is misplaced, then we're always going to be disappointed and so if that's where our hope is, then unfortunately we can lose hope. That's why our hope should always be on the Lord that we're going to get through this and we're going to come out the other side because God has promised that he'll be with us. Uh, obviously, the, uh, it can lead to discouragement. We may get to the point of thinking, well, I don't think God cares. Uh, in spite of what scripture says, uh, God must not care because God's not hearing our prayers. He's not answering prayers. Uh, of course, we can also give in to fear and fear comes with all of those material things that we're dealing with. And fear comes with the illness itself. Uh, if we get the illness, it seems like so many people have dealt with the illness in so many different ways that uh, if you get diagnosed with the illness, there seems to be kind of an automatic fear. Is this going to be uh, a part of the illness that's going to just come and go and everything's going to be fine? Or is this going to be fatal? And it seems like uh, scientists aren't giving us any good answers to that. Of course, it can lead to depression and uh, also, it can lead us to giving in to temptations. As we said, when Jesus was out there, he's being tempted, and he's being tempted in ways that uh, are just common temptations today. How many people are tempted by, by the thought of power? Uh, how many people are tempted uh, to test God? Well, God said, so therefore... Uh, I'm going to go do it because that's what God said. And uh, the other thing is uh, we get tempted by the basics in, in life, whatever those basics look like. So uh, the effect of, of long-term isolation like this can be given in to uh, some of the temptations. It might be something no more than food uh, but it can begin to affect the things we're watching, what we're listening to, and all those other kinds of things. So uh, all of these are possible negative things that can come out of isolation. But there are many positive things, I think, that we need to look at that we can draw out of our time of isolation. Uh, first of all, we can choose to draw closer to God. Now, sometimes we might think, well, you know, that's just something that happens or doesn't happen. I believe that there's a big part of choice that comes along with that. So we can choose to draw away from God and, and to be refocused on other things, or we can choose to draw closer to God. Let's face it. Uh, we're going through a time that we're, some people are all alone in their homes and they don't even have somebody there to draw close to. And so the best person we can draw closer to is going to be uh, drawn closer to the Lord. I come to the garden of alone, uh, but Jesus is there when we're in the garden. So we can choose to draw closer to God. We have far more time to read scripture than what we had before. It's really kind of amazing how busy that we get. Now, those of you who are working, of course, I understand uh, the busyness of your jobs. And if you have children, it adds to the busyness and all the other activities that go along with that. But 
what I learned many, many years ago is that retirees seem, for the most part, to get so active after they've retired, I wonder how they had time to do anything when they worked. And so, uh, but now we're forced out of those external activities for the most part. So now, instead of just doing the next puzzle, now it gives us time to actually read scripture. And I said that being able to draw upon scripture when uh, we're going through challenges of life is a comfort as we go through those challenges. So if you haven't been uh, one that would spend time in reading scripture, now's a perfect time to do that. And there may be some among you that don't even have a Bible, or if you have a Bible, it's the old family King James Version from uh, 50 years ago, and you've tried to read that, and it's hard. And uh, if so, let me know, and I'll give you some guidance as to Bibles that are easier to read that will be helpful to you. So uh, the, one of the great positives that can come out of this time of isolation is time to read Scripture. Also, it's time to read other positive writings. You know, there are thousands of books out there written by Christians. Some of them address going through some of the challenges of life and how they've done it themselves. Uh, I'm reading uh, uh, St. Augustine's uh, book uh, on the city of God. I, I wasn't aware when I ordered it that it's a book about that thick. And there's, I don't, I don't know how many pages are in it, but there's a whole bunch of pages in it, but uh, I had heard about it and I'd never read it. And so now it's given me an opportunity to read it. And so far, it really is very interesting. So uh, there are many, many uh, books out there that you can read. We actually have a, a library full of them here. And Nancy is here uh, during the day, uh, Monday through Thursday from 10 to 2. And so if you want something to read, you don't have to go out and buy it. You can actually come to the library and uh, check out a few books. And so uh, catch up on some of the other readings. There are some wonderful, wonderful Christian authors out there that will help you in your understanding, not only of scripture, but leading a Christian life. It's a time in which we can strengthen our faith. Uh, I've talked about this before, that whenever we're going through challenges in our lives, we basically end up with two choices. We can draw closer to God or draw farther from God. So as we draw closer, it gives us the ability to strengthen our faith. And how do we strengthen our faith? When we're going through something that just seems to be going on and on and on and on, the way we strengthen our faith is to reflect back on other times when we've gone through trials and tribulations in our own lives, whatever that's looked like in the past. When we look back on that and we see how we went through that, even though maybe there was a time that you were near the end of your own faith at that point, and and right at the right time, God intervened and got you through whatever that challenge was. It's those past experiences with God that help us to be able to deal with the current experiences that we're going through. So it enables us to strengthen our faith. And every time we go through an experience that's uh, some kind of a trial or a challenge, and we make it through successfully, each one of those should strengthen our faith all that much more. This is also a perfect time for us to encourage one another. I talked to you several weeks ago about uh, contacting the people that sit next to you in church. Uh, that's a wonderful start. Uh, many of you have the church directory. Uh, how about just picking up their directory and picking out a name and, and make a few phone calls because we all need encouragement during this time. And so uh, what better way to be encouraged than to have somebody give you a call and say, how are you doing? And, you know, to offer uh, some words of encouragement to help us get through this and to support one another. And, of course, praying for each other. Uh, praying is like reading scripture. It's one of those things that so many of us seem to do on the run. 
uh, we might think about praying a, a little bit in the morning before we run off to do whatever we need to run off to do, or maybe just as we lay down in bed at night. And I don't know about you, but when I try to do that, I'm asleep quickly. And so it's not really a great time for me to uh, embark on a long uh, time of prayer. And so, uh, again, we have wonderful opportunities to pray for one another. Nancy's sending out that prayer list, and look at that prayer list and pray for the folks that are on that prayer list. And if you prayed for them last week and they're still there, pray for them this week. But uh, prayer is uh, one thing that's going to help all of us get through all of this stuff. So basically, when all is said and done, we have to recognize the fact that we are isolated. And we don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know how much longer we're going to be stuck. Uh, they're talking about trying to open up some of the more public places like beaches and things like that. That'd be a wonderful thing if that happens. But it's still going to be a while before we're able to resume our normal activities. We don't know how long that's going to be. So uh, the challenge to us today is how am I going to deal with this isolation? How have I dealt with it up till now? And if it goes on, how am I going to deal with it as time continues to go forward? So you know, we are isolated. And so the big question is, how am I going to handle continued isolation for how long it's going to be? And my hope is that rather than succumb to all of the negative possibilities that can come with isolation, my hope is that uh, when all is said and done, we will have found this time to be a time that we are able to draw closer to the Lord, that we are going to get able to get deeper in His Word, that we are able to encourage one another and support one another, that we are able to pray for one another better, and that when all when we're done with all of this, some of those things will have been so ingrained with us that they'll carry on uh, beyond uh, the end of the virus. And that would be a wonderful thing because the world is in need of prayer now. And we are the ones that know what prayer means and understand it and understand the power of prayer. So that's my hope that you'll uh, think about these experiences of Jesus and particularly the second time uh, when he went off by himself to pray. Uh, I believe that when he did that, it empowered him to continue his mission here on earth. And that's what we need to do. We need to continue to go forward, being the people that God calls us to be, and continuing to serve him in the midst of the virus and in the midst of anything else that might come our way at any time. So that's my hope for you, that you'll be able to hang tough and to draw closer to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for reminding us of uh, these times of Jesus in the wilderness. And uh, there are different times, Lord, but that, uh, as we think about this, we recognize that uh, when he went off by himself, that those were the times that he was in power. Those were the times that he was re-energized. Those were the times that when he came back among the disciples and others, that the, his uh, direction was fixed and firm. And so help us to be like Jesus in that respect, Lord, that we are going to take this time that we are forced to be in isolation and we're going to make it into something that's positive, that will draw us closer to you, draw us deeper into scripture, uh, draw us closer to one another through encouragement and prayer and that when all is said and done, that the good habits that we're picking up during this time are going to be habits that are going to be with us forever. So thank you, Lord, and we ask that you continue to be with us as we continue to deal with this virus. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to uh, close our time together with a leaning on the everlasting arms. Uh, when we're talking about going through all of this, again, just like uh, being alone, it's times like this when 
all we can do is lean on Jesus. So Jennifer is going to uh, lead us in, uh, so pull out your words as we get ready to lean. Again, I want to thank Jennifer and uh, Pastor Ralph for being uh, with and helping out today. And again, thank you all for joining us today. I hope that uh, you've been blessed as we've been able to come together separately again. So uh, hear the benediction. Now may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit go with you today. May he give you his love, his peace, and his joy, and as you are there in isolation, may you experience that peace and share the love and joy with others that you talk to and encounter. In Jesus' name, amen.